I'm on my way to see an industry which employs almost everyone at some point or another. It's so successful a working model that there isn't a country in the world that has found a better way of underpinning its economy, even though some have tried. And yet this industry affords its workers very little status indeed, even though its productivity is enormous and its working hours some of the longest in any industry anywhere. It's been in business for generations and it's based in seven out of ten households in the average street. I'm talking, of course, about the family. PLC. <laughs> I've brought in some top advisors who help businesses adapt to change. Oasis management consultants are about to analyse the family. We're using, as a test case, one typical family, the Baileys of New Malden, Surrey. Conditions are changing fast for families. Half of all mothers now go back to work by the time their child is a year old. One in three fathers works more than 50 hours a week. How can the family industry function when its labour force is moonlighting elsewhere? Now, this industry, far from banning sex discrimination, has always been based on the assumption that the men that work for it will perform different functions to the women. A bit oldie-worldie, those notions, I know, but they no doubt stem from the undeniable fact that only women have the necessary qualifications to give birth. At the moment, that is. One way or another, though, that does leave this vast and important industry wide open to the effects of the gender quake. Right, there we go. Could you, um, first of all, just, just tell me, are there enough parallels between, say, um, a factory and a family for you to be able to apply your techniques here? Well, so I think there are lots of parallels, actually, because if you think about what's going on in the home, there's workers and there's work which needs to be done and tasks which need to be shared out that people have to take responsibility for. There are customers, there are products, um, there's management. Um, the family has long-term goals, it worries about its image in the marketplace and so on. And if you, if you think about some of the changes which are going on in industry today, they have to face faster and faster change at the moment. Businesses have to adapt. And you can apply the same model to the family. They too have to adapt to all the changes that are going on in the environment around them. Mm. Relationships within the family are obviously very complex. But we think that uh, our sorts of, sort of approach does allow you to take a different perspective. It gives you a different view of, of the problems involved. Mm. So could you take me through what, what it is you're going to do? What is your method? OK. I've uh, we've produced a little diagram just to show the sorts of steps we're going to be taking. Taking the Baileys as an example, my consultants are going to define the family goals. Is their product up to scratch? Are inefficiencies or skill gaps affecting performance? Should terms and conditions in the industry be improved? The most obvious product of the family PLC is the children. Brought up to be morally aware, educated, potty trained adults. But there's another key product, social cohesion. The family is where the individual joins society. If you could change some aspect of your life, what would it be? I think it would be to have the responsibility um, of the house, the looking after of the house and, and the organisation and the running of it taken away from me. If you could wave a magic wand, what would you most like to change in your life? I don't think there's an awful lot that I would like to change in my life. Lynn works part-time. Terry works full-time. Lynn, how much time do you spend talking things over with Terry in a week, would you say? Not very much, actually. Certainly as far as the children are concerned, I can go days on end without seeing the children. This family model, man working full-time, woman part-time with dependent children, is the most common one in Britain today. There are stresses and strains inherent in it. Our management consultants have to find a strategic way forward for the family at large. Sometimes he puts us to bed. Oh, really? 
They spent a day with the family and also viewed hours of videotape which Lynn and Terry had recorded over several weeks. It showed them that the main cause of worker unrest here is division of labour. I mean, how many more? I mean, I work 25 hours a week, or 20 to 25 hours a week. How many hours would you say you work a week? Double that. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Right? And so given that you work double the amount of hours that I work, how, it's got to be saying something when you can also, I mean, in effect, I, I should have a lot more time to go out and pursue leisure activities, but... I haven't. I've got less than you. Oh, how can anyone say this is pleasurable? This has got to be just to get out of the house. <laughs> Shall I or shan't I? So what do you think would happen if I went away for a week? Well, we, you think? we wouldn't be able to do much, would we? He wouldn't help us, he'd say. No, who's he? Who's he? Nobody would help us, would he? Why not? No, the tea. <laughs> All asleep. We wouldn't have. Not the whole time. We wouldn't get much of a lunch. So you wouldn't get much of a lunch? No. So it's certainly one of the things I can do and do do probably more often than anything else. I still think, to a certain extent, that you think I should be looking after you as part of not as part of one of the children, but you. I'm, I'm sure you do, and I'm sure a lot of men do that. They think you know that the women are there to look after them. Now, we commissioned to serve over a thousand people for Gender Quake, and one of the questions we asked was, if a Martian was to observe family life in your home, who would he think does the housework on the planet? How many people said the Martian would think that men do the housework? One in 20. At the end of the day, the consultants announced their findings. Through talking with them, we I think have come up with what their goals really are, even though they haven't been explicitly stated. Uh, before uh, independence they value their independence very much they want to create more time to do other things and I think um, the other thing which came out quite strongly was that they wanted to spend more time together as a family mm. the pressure of time is the thing that's really playing on both of them but Lynn feels that to get her independence she needs to have more than just time and partly it's time but partly it's the, the reassurance that when she is taking time off that the house is still running, the kids are still being looked after. Mm. And so I think there's really more, a rather larger way for it to go for her to really realise her independence. In spite of everybody's awareness in the family, there's still quite a split of roles according to gender. Mm. Yeah. And responsibility for organising around the house tends to default to Lynn. And probably what it needs is for Lynn to release some of that responsibility and uh, invest some of her time in actually delegating some of the things and training Terry and the rest of the family how to do some of these things and, and also Terry to uh, take the initiative and take on some of those things as well so that we end up with a workforce which is more flexible and more multi-skilled and, uh, and who can operate as a team. In business what we'd be trying to do is create role models which are much more flexible and particularly role models who are adapting to change the and the more flexible the workforce is, the more easily it will be able to adapt to change in the future. Multi-skilling is what the real world is demanding of the modern family. In business, it's adapt or go bust. But the family is still designed around women staying at home. Even though the fastest growing part of Britain's workforce is women with children under five. Most of us have a picture of the family up here that no longer fits into the way things are. The traditional family was designed to fit into a labour market that doesn't exist anymore. There are two contracts that need renegotiating here. The first is between men and women who have to work out how to share parenting and the home. The second is between parents and society itself. And that's not easy. No wonder an increasingly popular option is to opt out of this family industry altogether, tear up the contracts. And all the signs are that many women in their 20s are doing just that. 